Amen. Amen. So we are going to read from our Bibles. John, that 
lives, that weight, or that life which has been the beginning, was going to manifest itself. That life, in the beginning, he took the form of the weight. But then when John came, that same light, which was the weight, took on another form. The Bible says the word became flesh. Yeah. It was, John was not following that man that was born by Mary. That man for the beginning, for the birthday. Yeah. But John was following the light. Yeah. So we, when we talk about our Lord, we are not talking about that man from Galilee. That is the form that God chose to appear in in the days of his first coming. But beyond that body, there was a life. And in the beginning, that life showed its power by creating. Let there be light. Let the earth bring forth. That was that life speaking. It was not Jesus. It was the life that came to dwell in Jesus. And when it dwelt in Jesus, that life continues to speak things into existence. Amen. And that same light that appeared at that time came in our days. That is why we have the message of a great shining light. Because that light, which was there before Adam was, that came to manifest in a man called Jesus. That same light that created that body inside of Mary and was called Jesus. The same light came again in the last days. So we know that in the beginning, God had fellowship with his children. With his family. And then sin interrupted the progress. And the only way we can go back to the beginning, you have to go past sin. You have to find a passage to cut through sin and go back to that which was in the beginning. Amen. And when we go back to Genesis chapter 3, we find that after men had sinned, Amen. Amen. God sent them out of the garden. So they were separated. It was no longer that which was in the beginning. It became another place. Amen. Amen. We had a message this morning about that which was in the garden. Amen. But after sin came in, God sent them out of the garden and the earth changed. The Bible says is the, 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 the earth started bringing forth thorns and pieces. Amen. Yeah. But that was not so in the beginning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Then God sent them out. Yeah. When we read in Genesis chapter 3, yeah. this is where I want us to start our talk. Ah. And not long. So we read in verse 22. Amen. Let me let me summarize it for you. This message is here to guide the church, to guide the true believer back to that which was in the beginning. Amen. In any groups of people. Amen. Yeah. God can create people. Yeah. But he is not interested yeah. in the true believers yes. connecting back yeah. to that which was in the beginning. Yeah. 
But in the beginning was the way. And in the way was a life. And that life was a life of men. So when you talk about connecting to the beginning, we are, we are talking about the life of God itself. In men. And everywhere in creation. So when men was placed in the garden, and they committed sin, God sent them out. Now from verse 22, Genesis 3, the read as follows. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and not now let us put forth, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So the Bible says, God sent them out, because he was putting a separation. They had to separate from that which they had in the beginning. And God said, He is separating them so that they should not have access to life. Because that which was in the beginning was the way, and in the way was life. So when they sin, God sent them out and put a partition. But it's not a natural partition, it's a supernatural partition because the Bible says here and to guard the way to the tree of life. God put a, a, a child on the east of the Garden of Eden. Now, there was Eden, yeah. as we had in the morning. Yeah. Then on the east of, the, of Eden, God planted a garden. Now, in the east of Eden, God went to the same garden. On the east of that same garden, which was in the east of Eden, was the entrance. So the entrance to the garden was in the east, and the garden itself was in the east. So the Bible says, God put down, put cherubim there, and a sword, a flaming sword, so that men cannot have access to life anymore. So we can already see that the way to that which was in the beginning, we have to go past, we have to go past the cherubims, because they cut the way, and we have to go past to the sword, so that we can be connected to that which was in the beginning. Amen. So throughout time, when, when the prophet Look at that which was in the beginning. They always saw a God and a flame. Amen. Because there was a flame, they saw. So they, saw, they, saw, they knew that something had brought them to see that which was in the beginning. So now, now and then, God will give them one piece. And over. Amen. But we are talking about fully connected to that Now, when we go back to John, when John was preaching, we hear that this message was powerful. The Bible says he, you, 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 you will go before the Messiah with the, 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 the spirit of Elijah. Amen. He says the power and the spirit of Elijah. So it's not just a spirit. It's a power. And if it's a power, it can do the way. Amen. It's not just a spirit, but it's the power that goes with the spirit to move things. 
Amen. We hear about Moses. He was anointed by God. And when Moses spoke the way, he didn't have to go and, and collect frogs and throw them into Egypt. No, he spoke the way. But that spirit went out. When Moses went to sleep in the night, the spirit, which has power, created rocks and placed them all over Egypt. Amen. It was not Moses doing that. It was that spirit which had power to do the way. When, when, God, when Moses said, uh, keep the Passover, and this night, they will be dead to the firstborn. It was not just Moses going and chasing for the firstborn. The spirit that was in Moses yeah. was not just there to make him speak. But that spirit had the power to bend up. What Moses has spoken. Now we hear today that we, the man that changed. He came in with the spirit of Elijah. Amen. John never performed a miracle. But that message went out with such power. The Bible says the soldiers and the rulers and every the publicans came out to be baptized by John. Because a message yes. that has got power. So it's the, it's the power yeah. that is pulling a people yeah. to that which was in the beginning. Amen. Yes. Now, when John spoke, the Baptist, he was sent to be a witness. He was, he was to bear witness of what life. So to be a witness, you have to see something. So you have to be there when it happens. So God was going to do something. And John was supposed to witness. Amen. You are not a witness. If you talk yes, I have that this one so this. You are not a witness. A witness is somebody who is there when something happens. Now John was sent to be a witness of the light. So John was to be the witness of the light of God. Because that light is the life of God himself. In the beginning was the way, and the way was with God, and the way was God. And in that way, there was a light, and it was the light all made. So John was going to be the something that God is going to do in his day. The Bible says he was sent so that people through him can believe. So they had to believe the witness of God. So God was going to do something, and John was going to see it. And after he saw it, he was supposed to report to the people. And that was the message. So what John was saying was not something that he read. It is something that he saw. Amen. So, and then always, there was a message. He was also always leading them to something. He was telling them, uh, there's one that is coming, that is greater than me. Amen. So, everyone that followed the message of John, they knew that John was talking about someone who is greater than John. Now, if you read your, your, your gospel, the Bible says, uh, of all the of all the all that were born of women, there was no one who was greater than John. So it is this one that is coming. He's 
coming different. What I can say for Batman. Everyone that was before John. God was greater than them. God was greater than Moses. God was greater than Jeremiah. He was greater than Elijah. Yet he never performed a miracle. But we know that Jesus and John were born six months apart. Amen. John was born first. And after him was Jesus. So John was saying, there is one who is coming. Because John is supposed to witness that which has been beginning. He says, when that one comes, uh, you will have a friend in his head. So he's already talking about this man that is coming. You must look in that head. There is something that is God in his head. And that which is in his head is the thing that connects you to that which was in his beginning. Amen. So, we look back at the end. We find that now to connect the message that comes after John's message is that message which is going to tell the people how to connect back. Jesus is the one who's talking about justification. Amen. Amen. Now, justification is the first work of grace. But grace came through Jesus Christ. Now, what does justification mean? It means you have never done it in the first place. Oh. The word justification it means you have never done it in the first place. But where is your first place? That which was in the beginning. If you were there in the beginning, the first work of grace, when, when God deals with you, He doesn't look at you in your sinful state. He justifies you because He wants to look at you from your first estate. We hear that God has the, has the book. That always looks at that was which was written before the formation of the world. In the there at the beginning. Amen. So when God justifies you, it means he looks at you from an eternal point. Because he wants to give to you that which was in the beginning. Amen. So, when the friend is in, then God wanted to reveal the problem of coming back to him to connect him with that which was in the beginning. So, he gave Moses a plan. Amen. And when he gave Moses a plan, Okay, he took the bag of Egypt. Go and the And they thought, no, this is it. They thought now they were together with God. Along the journey, God told them to bring the tabernacle. Because he wanted to show them the way to come to him. And in that tabernacle, it had three courts. Amen. And the, the door to the tabernacle. Remember, God came down after they built the tabernacle. And he dwelt in the third court, which is the holiest of holies. God tried to show men that to come to him, it takes three stages. Amen. Amen. Now we know that the door of the 
of Father. The, and the Bible says, and the Son of Man shall come in with clouds. Clouds of glory. Not a rain cloud. Cloud of glory. Now we are reading about it here. To know what happened in our day. And why God had to do the things that he did. So it says there were four living creatures. If we go to verse 10, it says, as for the likeness of their faces, they were four, they, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they, they four had the face of a box on the left side, and four also, also had the face of an eagle. Right? Yeah. So these are the cherubim. Yeah. So this message, the Lord expressed himself very yeah. yeah. And how the Lord expressed himself yeah. of all these things that he's talking about. Yeah. He's just talking about what is surrounding God. Yeah. God is not a big big. God is not a cloud. Amen. Yeah. God is not a pillar of fire. God can put on the pillar of fire. Back in the days of Israel, during the night, yeah. he became the pillar of fire. He appeared as a pillar of fire. Amen. In the night. And during the day, as a cloud. He's not a pillar of fire, but he can dress himself in those. He can cover himself in them. God is a spirit. But for him to be visible today, he has to take on a form that a human eye can catch. Amen. So all these creatures, they appeared. Over God's people. Yeah. From the garden, the same thing that was guarded, the, the way to the tree of life, was there to influence the people. Amen. And those that were of God came under the influence. Because of this, up the God. So the same God by putting people to come to the soul and then go into the garden. Amen. Alright. So when we read in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6. Brother Brennan said, 
say your minimum outside goal that will make the message that will give sense to the message that will give sense to the message that will cause the people to understand and that's what we see the spirit of God doing in our days picking up picking up men to minister the things that are in the way Amen. 
to withstand in the evil day. Now there's an evil day. Amen. Amen. Right? An evil day. It means that is the worst day of all the evil. And that day can be in our time. Because we know that throughout the ages, they were fighting demons. But the, 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 the devil, his army was not fully out. He had a reserve. A 200 million demons. And those were released in our time. The most evil of all the days. Now the Bible says, put on the Holy Spirit of God. That he may be able to be sent in the image of the And he says, having that all, having that all to stand, stand therefore, having your right feet about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to find the very death of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the way of God. Amen. Amen. So in verse 17, okay, you, you find that now Paul is showing how a, an army or an army is dressed to fight. But we are also in a battle. We are fighting against things, spiritual entities, and you know just more. That is standing between us and the heaven. Amen. Now you will see that to fight. Amen. You need something. You need a focus. You need a weapon of assault. Amen. Amen. Now if you read the verses, you will see that the last ammunition that came to this soldier, that is in verse 17. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the way of God. The last ammunition to fight someone that came was a sword. Amen. Now, when, when, when the church has grown and matured, to be able to face and cut its way through the high places, into the heavens, and the sword of the spirit is the way of God. Amen. 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 Which are the four cherubims. And after the cherubims, God gave it a sword. That is the thing that dropped in the hand. Amen. 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 He read John. John says, The one who comes after me, he's got a friend in his hand. Amen. And he will separate. Now, the word of God cut asunder in divine. So the last sword that fell into the, into the engine of the church. So you that, 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 that was the ammunition to show that the, the, the army of God is fully equipped to take on the spiritual battle and, and overcome no faith. Amen. Okay, let's read another part of the
For which of you intending to build a tower, sitting not down first and counter the cost whether he be sufficient, he have sufficient to finish it. Less happy after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, that all that behold it begin to walk him. Mm. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Mm. Right? Mm. Finishing the battle, the king, 
who is going into Bergen has to take out his sword and uh, to assault the enemy. That is why we just said earlier. The key sword came down in 1963 to finish off the enemy. Amen. And the Bible says, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies uh, your footstool. That's why when he came down with that sword, uh, he stepped on the sea. Uh, he stepped on the sea and on the land because the enemies were there and he took out his sword to proclaim victory. Now we see that the church received a double anointing to take it back to that which was in the beginning. And I want to read you something uh, that will be in closing. Amen. So, you see where we are going with our subject journey. Amen. All right. I want us to read in the book of uh, Genesis 49. To see, because the Bible says we are the church of the firstborn. Because according to scripture, uh, uh, the firstborn. The Jew always received a double anointing. When the father had born and had children, and he had to give up his inheritance, uh, the first born, it had to be very clear. Amen. Double. That is scripture. What he gives to the other children was given down to the first children. Now, if I, I, Genesis 49, I want to read maybe from verse 1. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I will tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourself together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. My might. Amen. Reuben okay. is my might. Reuben is my might. Reuben is my might. And the beginning of my strength. And the excellence of divinity. Amen. So not just dignity. I know about the excellency. Uh, what also of it uh, uh, it's, it's nothing about this. And the excellence of power. So his might is the beginning of strength. And is the excellence of power. Amen. So you can see that there's just too much power. It's my strength, it's my upon one man. Now, when you start doubling power, this in the natural is just, it's just about the birthright. When you take it to the spiritual, once you start doubling up power and add power upon power, it's called of importance. So a firstborn of God has got might and is the beginning of the strength of God and is also the excellency of that power. No matter how. Amen. Amen. You know that everything is powerful when it starts. So the beginning of the strength of God. Amen. Is it taken? It's omnipotent. The Bible, the Bible says to prove that we are the church of the person. We got power to start. Which was the power that was given in the day of Pentecost. That power, when, when Paul saw it, he says it is only the first fruits. 
Amen. It is not a fullness. He says we are still waiting for the fullness of our adoption. This is just the beginning. Just to have the Holy Ghost alone, which the world doesn't know anything about. You are already higher than the world. But beyond that, God wants to add something. So the Son of the power in the earth. And Paul says, with, that, with what I have, I, 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 when I prophesy, I prophesy with limitation. What I know, I know in part. When I prophesy, I prophesy in part. And what Paul was teaching you today? Uh, the apostles Peter he says there are some hard things that God has told but Paul says that is just in part amen so there's a part of the Spirit so there's another one when I get into this one, there's a part that is starting when I get into this one, but there's a part again that is finishing so beyond just having the Holy Ghost, you still have the inheritance. Amen. Amen. So we get double power. So anyone that cannot receive the Holy Ghost is not even in the picture to begin with. Because the Holy Ghost is just the first fruit. You know, it is said in the Old Testament. We had in the morning, there was the feast of the sheep wedding. The first branch. Let's say now you, you, you planted grapes. They don't all happen at the same time. Amen. So the first branch, the first one which are out of the they they run it first. Now to celebrate that this is the beginning, or the whole tree is going to ripen. They cut the branch and wave it before the Lord. Amen. That is that is the first branch. Amen. So we have, God is going to be taught, restore that which they had at Pentecost. He's going to give them uh, the former reign. But to us, he gives the former reign and the latter reign. So this, the Holy Ghost, is going to be the latter So this, the Holy Ghost, has come to its fullness. Amen. Not just to cut you from the world of the, from sin. Not to give you power to pray over the sin, but the power to change your own body. Amen. The power that is now in the church that came after the sword came down, which connected us to that power from the beginning, where there was no aging. That same power is now in the church. We are not talking about somebody speaking forcefully. I really don't want to No, of course, it's when I came to you. Oh, no, I did not come to the power of waiting. I speak to you. But it's the power of the resurrection. The same power, the first portion of the power, the disciples could pray for a brother that is in jail. They can they would pray for God and God will send his angel because of their prayer when we release Peter on the way. That was at the beginning. Amen. But again, there's another power that came down. Not that just the power of laying hands on the sea, but the power of the dead people. And that all comes to the church. Now, Brother Brennan says that the truth was displayed a little bit just for the church to know what they have. 
angels that inspire people to say things for the opportunity to the church of the living God. So we are back in that position where we have got the power of the spoken way. Just like in the days of Egypt. Amen. All the time, when they were in Egypt, Moses was doing everything for them. He was the one who went to Pharaoh and he, and he passed all the judgment. But after the message of the token, Amen. That day, God said to Moses, Tell them to keep the land. And on, on, on the 14th day, they must stay in the evening and apply the, 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 the back of the door. But why is it the message before that night? Tell the children of Israel to go to the Egyptians, not you. They must go to the Egyptians and tell them, you must give us in my gold. It must be the church that speaks. Not the messenger anymore. When the time of the Exodus comes, the church. The church has to grow enough. It has to mature. To come to the speaking terms. Where they are no longer afraid to speak. It is no longer Moses speaking for them. It is the faithful speaking talking what they want. Oh, wow. 
preaching. Amen. And there was a there was a lady uh, somewhere in the church. Uh, and he called her by name. Amen. And he said to her, You are Mrs. So and so. And you come from this address. So I bought this in here. Uh, receive your healing. I'm gonna put her up. That lady received your healing. There were some people there. The name is right. But this woman is our neighbor. She is not coming from that advice that this man is talking about. So after church, they went to her. And they said to her, Our neighbor, why did you allow that man?
seen the four living creatures in the living room. You know what? What's your game? In our day, when the dinner, they all appeared. Come back to it. You saw that was flashed here last night. In the house. All those cherubims are there. Amen. Right. And then there's an entrance. Beyond those cherubims. A sword. That flaming sword. Came down. That's all. So where is the church now? If we've seen the cherubims. Now we have seen the sword. Now where is the church today? Amen. Amen. Now you can see it flashed over there. Amen. Amen. That is not a rain cloud, my friend. Amen. Amen. This is the supernatural cloud. Amen. That's God's sign. Amen. Of our time. To show what God has given to the church. Amen. So it's the power. Amen. Amen. It's not just the spirit of Elijah. It's the power. When Elijah, the first Elijah was here, he did not just have a, 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 a spirit to say things that they could not understand. There was a power to break that up. So he called a sugar. Yeah. That does not reach him. This is terrible. This is no, now let's call upon the God. I'm going to call my God. You call your God. Now it goes beyond just preaching a sermon. It goes into changing your life. The power that can take you. We are not talking about a unique teaching. How we need that to say Sasolimitidi? Amen. Yeah. It's the power. My God. Amen. Yeah. That is able to move. How oh, power to push push again? Amen. Yeah. When the power came down, yeah. and it struck that mountain, I didn't get how it is. Right. And literally, oh. rock, we see the land is filled up. It exploded. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. 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 Now, oh. it's not just a small thing. Oh. I know what to explore the rock. Yeah. You see that it's Those that are in mind will go. No one can move mind and body. There's not any creature to blast us out. How deep you can go to each other? You can move the islands of dynamite. Now this dynamite, when they explore the rocks, the rocks just fly out in pieces. This is very important. But this power is very constructive. When it cut out into a mountain, it shaped those rocks into triangles. So this power can shape you. I can shape you. Amen. You just have to allow Amen. So with this two word, brothers, we have received a message. Amen. Yeah. That came from God. Yeah. Just like John. When the power came, in John's days, he was out in the wilderness. But the John was out in the wilderness. And the river Jordan. Yeah. And when he was uh, going on his normal journey, uh, he caught something coming out of his head. And he and he saw something come flying. And he looked, and we think it took him over an eye. It was a dark. And he came in into a man. It was the Holy Ghost and the formation of a dark. Amen. When the power came down, in our days, Brother Branham looked out. He saw something coming out of his head. Then you're coming fast. It looked like dust. And then the God God went beyond dust. In front of him. Seven mighty angels. Amen. So that way, that came in the time of joy. That, that fruit that is the same way from Genesis. Yeah. 
control. If it's in your heart, you brought it down. Uh -huh. it's, 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 a, it's a promise. It's a vision. It is not to you. I swear, it's not to me. That is bringing God down. You are not our long prayer. Not our prayer. It's a vision. The best thing you can do is a promise. This is the best thing you can do is a promise. Yeah, 
You shall go forth and grow up. When Moses was come to years, he refused. So there must be a people that are called out. And that God are going to refuse all kinds of things from the world. Amen. Amen. That's why we have to talk about ideals and things. Sometimes, uh, maybe they walk past the ark, and even 
This is the word of God or the word of Noah. That's why some people come and touch. This is the message of this hour. So after Noah's in the ark, then Noah's not to become a rabbi. What do you do? You might as well have a rabbi. You know when God goes to the door? What do you do? It was on the seventh day. It made him more like a seventh day. Because from the day God commanded the rabbi to go in, he was going to be in. He was going to be in. Power. And if they are 
they tend to go and to put in world and have mercy on them. We do with our heart. Yeah. If they are not with this nigga, they don't have to love it. God will have mercy on you. We do with our father. At least they will not be rational. Amen. With this truest brethren, let me go some more talking today. This is how I hear. Brother Brennan, when he talks about how God displayed that power in that television. How we saw the people went yeah. with terrible conditions. Yeah. And immediately yeah. they came out home. Yeah. Because the power that is here can change anything. Yeah. It is different to change our bodies. And not only our bodies. It is going to transform this planet. I have a planet. Can I tell you my conviction? Now, this is something else. Yeah. You, you can choose what to take. Oh, yeah. But it's my little understanding. Yeah. I'm going to let you at least to seven. Where I come at you in seven. And when Jesus was in the grave, oh no, no, when Jesus died, there was that power. That came and struck the earth. I feel I can pass. It was not just an earthquake. This is the It was the power of resurrection. I don't know what. Waiting in the ground. I am in the past. Because the Bible says, God, do you need to get to open? By that power, many graves of the believers opened. But they never came out. They waited for Jesus to come out. But the power that came, the rain was showing that it's here to resurrect the dead. So when Jesus rose, they also came. So I want to begin that the power that came down in 1963 is somewhere here. And I'm not talking of a piece. Because it went to the ground. I don't know. I, I, somehow I'm led to believe that we are working on a prepared ground. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Ready for that time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But whether that be so, yeah. or if it not be so, yeah. we have received power. Yeah. Yeah. And that power is here yeah. to change our lives, yeah. change yeah. our situations. Yeah. Yeah.